Hey, this is Cardal. Today's topic is PC Part Picker. We are going to go over the absolute basics of PC Part Picker's website, how you can use it to help you find components, and how you can use it to modify the builds that are in our sticky post. The sticky post is called Some Foundational Builds to Start From. If we look at the subreddit, it's at the very top. And inside here is a five-year-old thread that I update every five to six months, uh, or depends on how frequently the technology advances. But it has a bunch of different price points, some things of note, so like motherboards, why I selected the motherboards, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you read through this. Uh, it is very important, especially if you do not have a computer already. Um, they have a student PC, an entry level sub $1,000, and then we got solid gaming rigs, rigs and you know going all out. But uh, you can basically start with the student work PC and go from there. So let's go over PC Part Picker's website. What is this site? So this is a system build from that, that I put together and you can edit the parts list and you can modify it. And you'll know that this build has a price and this is a completely fully functioning system. I did a live stream where I built almost this identical system. I'd made a couple modifications just because of the customer, but uh, basically it was this computer. Um, and so, yeah, it's it was pretty interesting to go through. I've never built in this case before. I gave it a five out of 10. Um, we have a build link at the top left. So if you need help and you wanna make a post in the subreddit, make sure you include this in your questions somewhere in the post. If you do not have that and you put like screenshots of your build, I will remove the post. So uh, it is not allowed. It's also at the top. All right, so we're gonna edit this parts list. The primary thing you want to do is see if your region is supported. Now, PC Part Picker pulls from online retailers. So any in, in like US or Canada, Denmark, whatever, your region will have specific online retailers that may be different from anywhere else in the world. So you want to make sure that your regions are supported. If they're not, you can still use the site. You just have to make sure that you're cross-referencing your local stores with components and see if they're available on the builder for the compatibility aspect of it, which we'll go over in a second. But on your region, it's on the very top right. And these are all the currently supported regions. So I'm in Canada. Uh, I could do this. I could change it to Canada. All my retailers become Amazon.ca, Newegg.ca, Best Buy.ca. All these prices are Canadian, gives me my price in Canadian dollars. So <clears throat> that's really, really handy. Uh, I'll go back to the US here just for this little example. So we've got our sub $600 US computer and we have a processor, motherboard, memory, storage, case, and a power supply. This is everything you need to actually have a functioning computer. It does have integrated graphics. The G series is a mobile graphics card in the processor, so it doesn't have a video card, but it will do very, very light gaming. It is not special by any means, but uh, it is something that might get the job done for a student. So um, it's kind of just a very, very basic system. There's nothing very fancy. It's there so that when you are done school, you could use this for like four years and you're in, in college, come back and upgrade it later on, uh, add a video card once you get home, whatever you wanna do, this is to get you through your school. So <clears throat> let's start off with how you use the site. So let's go ahead and say you want to change your processor. We'll go and we'll click this CPU here and we'll sort by price. And you can see we have the 8500G, 8400F, a 7600X, etc., etc. These are all of the ascending prices for different processors. So we're spending $162 for that processor. We can go up and spend an extra $14 and get a 7600X, which is not a bad deal. Let's go ahead and swap that out. But now we have a thing where you have to note, let's, let's make go back here and make a note of this. So here is our 8500G has a Radeon 740M. This is the graphics card, which is mobile. You can see the 8400F, so an F SKU, a SKU is just a product code, has none. The F, similar to Intel, F means it has no integrated graphics. The X, 
has radion, but it doesn't have a number beside it. So this is basically, it's a graphics display, but it's not designed for gaming. It is not going to perform very well at all. So you will probably want to buy a graphics card on top if you switch this out. So anyways, we're gonna go back and we are going to go back to the memory. So let's show you how to use the filters. So in the memory, we'll sort by price. And so it, it was a 16 gig 4800, so a two by eight. So let's say we want 32 gig. So we come down and we can see all of our filters here. We can say, okay, I want two by 16. And we'll say minimum, let's say we want 5200 mega transfer RAM. So we'll come up to the very top. And so we've got this T create here. It's not bad. It's white. If we want black, we've got this one. So let's just go ahead and add this one. <clears throat> so now what you can see is we went from two by eight at $40 roughly to a $71 kit faster and double the memory capacity for little less than double the price. And so now we're at $638. So that's kind of where you're, when you're using the, the system that it's going to give you components, you choose a price and you can kind of flip between this. So now let's say I go back to my CPU and I come back here and I say, well, maybe I don't need that. Let's go back to the 8500G and you know, we're saved ourselves $10, but now we have a graphics cardish type thing that we could use. Um, it's, it's that that back and forth. That's what the system builder is there for. As you change things, you can try to modify it, upgrade, downgrade, try and get the, the most value for your money out of this whole system here. So that's kind of how that works. Um, the other important thing I want to touch on is the system specification. You can see these compatibility things here. This is just telling us that it needs a BIOS update, which is fine because that motherboard supports BIOS updates without a processor. It'll be fine. But there are things like on the cases. So we're going to go into this Montec case. So on the product pages, the left hand side, instead of filters, it's going to show you the actual specs of the case. So you've got model number, what kind of tower it is. It has tempered glass, it tells you what kind of USB connectivity it has on the front panel. There's no USB-C on here, that would be a Gen 2. Uh, and then you have uh, all the motherboard form factors. So ATX, micro ATX, and mini AT ITX. Those are the ones that will fit inside. Mini ITX in this case would look very, very ab abnormal. Uh, but it has the maximum video card length. So what does this mean? The maximum video card length means, if I come up to this picture here, this is the back of the case. Your video card will be somewhere around here, maybe here, something like that. Um, from the back of the case to the front before the fan grill here. So the, the fans are actually in front right now. And those fans are in front of a mounting thing. So that means that there is a metal or a steel plate or whatever in here. So from there to the back is 305 millimeters. That's the maximum length. Some cases say don't have the fans on the outside. It's just a flat case. So the fans are actually inside a bit. That means that from the inside where the fans are to the back, it would be 305 millimeters, right? So it depends on what kind of case you get. When you start doing things like AIO water cooling, if you go that route, make sure that you are subtracting the thickness of the radiator from whatever the case says. So if it's 305 millimeters, you let's say the radiator is 65 millimeters thick. You have to subtract 65 millimeters from 305, and then that's what you're looking for. So like 340. So that's what you have to look for is now now you now you know like let's say 240 millimeters is what you can get because the system does not know that it's only going to give you 305 millimeter length graphics card so if i come in here and i go length you can see it does 305 but i know if just hypothetically that i'm putting an aio in here and that's 240 millimeters this is where you have to manually filter things so let's go down here to the filters to the length and here is our length so at the max now we have to do 240 millimeters and we come up to the top so here is our 240 millimeter cards 
We've got a 9060 for $380, $300 for this 8 gig version, which is not a good deal at all. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of how you can use that filter. So like it's it's now giving us only graphics cards that go up to a max of 240 millimeters. And you can kind of filter it so like you can choose different series, different models. Like let's say you want a 5060, for example. It'll filter out only 5060s that will fit in your case now. So this is a 235 millimeter long. This is $300. There you go. That's how you kind of use the filters and that will help you select components. But you have to know this stuff. You have to be, watch out for this. Uh, you might make mistakes if you don't pay attention to some of these things. You might get a component that doesn't fit because you didn't take into account that, oh, I'm not going to put the AIO in the top. I want to put it in the front now, but I've already ordered the parts. You will have to either change the AIO orientation or get a new case or get a new graphic card. You have to RMA or, or exchange one of the three things or change the configuration, etc. So all things that you have to take into account. It comes with a lot of practice in figuring out how to build a machine. Uh, make sure that you post your links and have if you have questions and we will try to help you if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I hope it helps everyone and we'll see you in the next one.